Hi folks, hope everybody's okay. We're going to look at our course on uh, following Christ, looking at unity. And um, so let's just come before the Lord. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 to 17. One Corinthians chapter one verse ten to seventeen. Let's come before the Lord. Lord, we come before you today. We thank you for your love and grace and we give you the praise and the glory and the honour. And Lord, I just pray that you bless your word now. And that I would know your love and grace, Lord, in your name. And those who are listening, you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, Father, in your name and for your glory. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean this, one of you follows, I follow Paul, another says I follow Apollos, another I follow Cephas, still another I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? I am thankful I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you are baptized, that we are that we baptized into my no one can so no one can say that you were baptized into my name yes I also baptized the household of Stephanus beyond that I don't remember if I baptized anyone else for Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with words of human wisdom lest the cross of Christ be tempted of, emptied of its power but this passage is saying look we've got to be united and a lot of churches around the world today that is united, you know, there's a lot of divisions in churches, people were not getting on and if you're in a church you need to get on, if there's any division in your church you need to confess it and you need to get right, okay whatever that is, because unity is something that God blesses in a church, okay so try and pray and, and work towards unity within your church, now there's unity in a church concerning there are things in a church that you shouldn't get angry with okay or shouldn't cause division Let, let's imagine you're in a church and you have a business meeting and the church want to get rid of some old chairs okay Half the church want to get rid of them, half the church don't. That is going to, you know, if you say, no, I'm not having it, this is what we want, then you're going to split the church. What you need to do is pray as the people of God and seek God's mind on the issue and then make your decision and then you'll be united in your decision. But if it's all about what you want as a group, we want the chairs, they don't want the chairs, we're going to get our way that's going to split the church but if you say Lord what is your will we seek your will and seek his face you will make a united decision um, another example of church split is is um, bad pastoral leadership pastor tries to discipline someone but maybe gets it wrong or maybe has got it right but some people think that pastors being hard that can bring in church splits um, people come in with into conservative evangelical churches and try to speak in tongues and that brings splits and people then go into churches that are speaking in tongues and bringing Calvinism and that brings splits basically the golden rule is on essentials of salvation unite and don't divide on the unessentials, things that are not to do with salvation, things in the church that are not really to do with salvation, then you should not split or cause division on those issues. 
It's as simple as that. So, for example, if you're in a church and you get a new pastor, right? It's appointed. But one day, for some reason, the pastor's been going to seminary to get some extra education. But the pastor's views have changed where the pastor doesn't believe the Bible's the word of God. The pastor tells this in the congregation and begins to preach the Bible but says when he comes to bits he doesn't like he says that's not the word of God. Now half the church is really upset about this because they believe the Bible is the word of God but the other half believe that the Bible can have mistakes in it. Now the people who believe the word of God and the Bible is inspired leave the church and they go and set up a church have they done right have they done wrong they've done right they had a right to split the church because the church had departed from the faith it became not no longer a true church that's when you can split a church when the church departs from the, the basic foundations of the Christian faith that's when you can't be united okay now here's another example you have a church and it's just a, an, a conservative evangelical church now eight and nine, it's, a, it's a church of a hundred two hundred people okay and these people who come in are charismatic they believe in speaking in tongues they believe in the gifts of the spirit but the church that they're in doesn't 200 people in the church most of them don't believe in it so this 10 15 people come in and they start speaking in tongues and everybody in the church is getting upset because they don't believe in it however about 30 or 40 people in the church begin to be won over by the charismatic group so now you have within a congregation of 200 maybe 50 60 people who believe in speaking in tongues where the rest don't then this group of 50 people leave the church and set up a new church where they can speak in tongues that is causing division in the church that dishonors God that does not honor God that's a that's a that is dishonest and and it's fractured the church and broken the church for no reason for no good reason that is not a right way to go about things if there were 10 people who speak in tongues goes to the church where they don't speak in tongues and then try to change that church they've done wrong they should stay away and go and plant a church based on the principles that they believe in not cause a division the pastor and the leadership should try to bring everybody together and unite and there has to be a compromise and the people who speak in tongues have to compromise and the church that don't speak in tongues have to compromise and there has to be a way to work it out together and be united that's the Christian way on, on in that issue on issues like that so on fundamentals we're to be united but if a church departs from the fundamentals you can divide but if a church is split on things that are not fundamentals to salvation like tongues and the gifts of the spirit Calvinism and Arminianism and all that and that's not right we should stay united as a people of God this is what I think because unity to God is a very precious thing but unity never at the price of truth but unity on things that, that are not essential the other thing is ecumenicism. Um, there is a biblical ecumenicalism and there is an apostate ecumenicalism. 
A biblical ecumenicalism is we unite on the essentials of the doctrine. So I can have fellowship with Calvinists, Arminians, Pentecostals, Charismatics, because we all agree on the basics of the gospel and Christianity. Okay? But in ecumenicism, at the worldwide ecumenical stage, I can't have fellowship with Catholic, Catholic Church. Because the Catholic Church does not preach the Christ that that I believe in. It doesn't preach that you're saved by grace. It makes the Pope the head of the church when it's Christ the head of the church. It makes it sacrifices Christ every week as a literal sacrifice when Christ was sacrificed once and for all. It confesses sin to priests when we confess our sins to Christ. It worships and adores Mary when we worship Christ. So I can't have fellowship with Catholic churches. And you shouldn't have fellowship with them. So ecumenicism is not right because it's at the expense of truth. But meeting with churches that are maybe different to you on the gifts of the Spirit or on the issue of Calvinism and Arminianism and things like that, meeting with those churches is is a good thing because you're showing unity. Okay. Um, but then you've got to be careful because there are lots of churches now that have started, been started, emergent churches that are not biblical. And they will want to have unity with you and meet with you, your church. So you've got to be careful and make sure that wh whatever church you have fellowship with, they are really biblical. Okay. I hope that's a help. But the Lord loves it when his people dwell in unity. Unity to God is a very precious thing and he loves it. And he loves people who are trying to bring unity to the church. You know, God really honours that when people are working towards unity. All right, But it's not unity at the price of truth. It's unity with truth. But if, if people try to bring unity at the, at the expense of truth, they're not being biblical. I hope that's helpful to you. Thank you for listening. It's quite deep, I know. But basically, try in your local church, when you get to a church, try and keep unity in the church. Don't listen to all the back chat and backstabbing and the negativity. Try to encourage people to think positive about the church rather than rip the church apart. All right, thank you.